you can smell it before you see it. And for many in Hong Kong, it's a sight for sore eyes that tastes even better. It's the kind of comfort food that requires a special touch. In this case, it comes from inside a wok, sizzling under a hypnotic, screaming fire. From poultry to seafood, these street-side eateries known as Dai Pai Dongs have got you covered. These stalls have been part of the sights and sounds of Hong Kong for the better part of a century. At its peak, there were hundreds, if not thousands, of these stalls throughout the city. But under decades of pressure to fold, only about 20 still remain. These stalls know how to make the most of a city as dense and crowded as Hong Kong. I love the chef. <laughs> I watch the chef the whole time. He's amazing. But how much longer can Hong Kong's beloved street side rebels last? During the 1960s and 70s especially, there was this uh, explosive time of growth, of economic growth for uh, Hong Kong. This period of time really saw uh, a majority of the population involved in the kind of economic prosperity of the city. Hawkers have been around since the earliest days of colonial Hong Kong in the late 19th century. But it was only at the end of World War II that the colonial government began doling out the first Dai Dong licenses. The three words in Cantonese literally mean big, license plate, and stall. The story goes that the Dai Dong licenses were very large. The licenses you see today, however, might not look the same. <laughs> Most of the remaining Dai Pai Dongs are clustered around two areas in Hong Kong. Some, like Oi Man Sang, are found in Kowloon's Shamshui Po district. Others are bunched up in Central on Hong Kong Island. Historically, Shamshui Po has been a working class community uh, surrounded by much larger industrial activity. In comparison, Central receives more attention from tourists and uh, middle to upper class um, communities in Hong Kong and are much more seen as this kind of nostalgic space that is indicative of Hong Kong's history of hawkers. Among tourists, Lan Fong Yun may well be the most famous Dai Pai Dong in the city. Behind the stall is the shop where customers sit and order. While the shop has a kitchen, only one item is actually made in the stall. We found it out because it's one of the most famous places for the milk tea in Hong Kong. Oh, you have tried it. Mm. <laughs> Several Dai Pai Dong sit in a row in this little alley on the slopes of the Soho area in Central. But even though it's tucked away, the stalls here always draw huge crowds. We were looking for Dai Pai Dongs because uh, we heard that it's a dying breed. Uh, it shows uh, how easily uh, you can order one and how uh, tasteful it is even if it's uh, in a street side. Whether in Sham Shui Po or in Central, people who visit Dai Pai Dongs tend to seek out wok hay or the breath of the wok. That's the magic that happens when cooking these ingredients in a wok over temperatures that cannot be reached in a home kitchen.
呢只鑊咧就拋出嚟啊，姜啊同埋咁樣咧，食落去咧有香味嘅，全部都係好似啊雜出嚟嘅一樣嘅。Lam Chi Singh is the third generation running the famed food stall. He worked as a welder in the automotive industry for ten years before taking over the family business. This restaurant 一到一九七幾年就唔能夠啦，所以變咗我爸啱啱轉咗咧就可以接手啦，做啦，應該唔會嘅啦，啲仔女太辛苦啦，咁熱三十幾度四廿度，越嚟越熱噶嘛天氣，又辛苦咧，啲後生仔點會接手啊 ？New skyscrapers under construction are also casting a larger shadow on the Dai Pai Dongs in their way. Oftentimes the storeholders become too old and um, find the work much too hard and, and also can't find someone to help them out with the store. They also might be experiencing a lot of pressure from uh, both private companies and the government to shut up shop. Queues outside this 70-year-old establishment are a pretty common sight. Changfat does not offer much in the way of variety, which is fine. People who come here already know what they're getting. A big burst of flavor in a plate of noodles. Today's a special day for Paul Ma, who has been working at this Dai Pai Dong for 40 years. Today, Changfat is just one of countless Dai Pai Dongs to fold. Along with its legacy, it has also left behind all the features that define a Dai Pai Dong. The kind of iconic imagery of a Dai Pai Dong tends to be the green tarpaulins on the roofs, red and blue plastic stools. Oftentimes you'll see folding tables, stackable stools and chairs because of the way that these spaces had to uh, pack away and expand really quickly. Dai Pai Dong is an interesting example because of this kind of uh, simultaneous legality and Ill illegality in the space. So for example, the uh, permanent tables where they're almost fixed to the floor, that is not a legal thing as part of the Dai Pai Dong structure. In the 1980s, they were fully expecting that within the decade, uh, there would be no more Dai Pai Dong. There was a change in policy so that children could not inherit licenses from their parents. In 2005, the beloved Dai Pai Dong Man Yun noodles was forced to close when the stall's license owner died. Since the 1980s, the license holder co-owned the stall with a couple who bought shares in the business. Man Yun's closure came despite calls from the public and politicians alike to preserve the 80-year-old stall. The government relaxed the rules years later to allow immediate family members to apply for a license transferal. But many Dai Pai Dongs, like Man Yun, had to reopen as a shop instead. Just a decade later though, the couple eventually closed shop as their children did not want to take over the business. Some of the alternatives that were offered to Dai Pai Dong storeholders was to go into uh, shop tenancies inside of uh, municipal service buildings. Stalls along this street in Sham Shui Po were relocated indoors in the 1990s. This Dai Pai Dong now sits atop a wet market inside a cooked food center. But roof over its head aside, it still has many of the charms of traditional street-side stalls. Little bit. Little bit. Here, we have some friends who 
同嘅 district 住啦，唔同嘅地區住啦，咁我哋會約埋咧個方便大家食完飯翻屋企嘅地方。Now run by the Choi family, Dai Li has been called home by so many others since it opened more than 50 years ago. 我所知嘅咧，就香港基本上已經都差唔多入曬啊！入曬係市政街市嘅，即係除咗極少數，因為嗰嗰啲環誒衞生環境問題啦，同埋加上嗰啲排檔全部都喺馬路邊嘅，可能係有多少影響啦。咁啊，政府可以又安置所有嗰啲啲街市政街市度啦。Before he was asked to come back to run the stall, eldest son Toby was an accountant in the U.S. I just got my license uh, as a CPA before uh, before he came over to the states, and you know, on vacation, he was asking me to, hey, why don't you come back and help me with this? Uh, we could expand it if we want, if you want in the future, and that just seemed like you know, next step for me. But Toby says help outside the family is proving harder to come by. We have it tough because we can't really attract any younger talent to come work for us because you know we're not like a big name you know restaurant that you feel proud and you tell your friends right like oh I'm working for the Four Seasons versus oh I'm working for you know some lowly Dai Pai Dong. There's, there's a big difference, there's a big gap, you know, in that in that sense. His father says he's worried. For the future of Dai Pai Dongs. The society is growing, growing, growing. Dai Pai Dong is growing. How it is developing, we don't know. If the government is holding on to those those food centers, they will be longer lived. True to its status as a place for the people, Dai Pai Dongs were also embedded in the first public housing estates in the 1970s. These Dai Pai Dongs were nestled in structures known as Donggu Teng, or mushroom pavilions, because their roofs resemble mushroom caps. So Dai Pai Dong were put into these Donggu Teng spaces to um, serve the community, but it was also a, a way of creating structure and order to uh, the Dai Pai Dong. Donggu Teng were often split into four quadrants, with each hosting a separate Dai Pai Dong. However, these mushroom designs also faded when the government stopped issuing new licenses in the 1990s. Many have since been demolished, but a few are still going strong. When customers come to this particular pavilion, they're getting not one, but three Dai Pai Dongs. Now, to either side of Samuel were Choi Ki and Lei Heng, operating with their own licenses. But in 2008, Choi said the government would only issue one license per pavilion. That was when the three Dai Pai Dongs combined to form Choi Wo Li, borrowing a word from the names of each of the original businesses. The new co-owners also chose an English name that signified their new unity. Together. Dai Pai Dongs were never built to last among the towering skyscrapers of the world's most vertical city. But more than just a place for a cheap meal, these street-side oddities have become a place for reprieve in a fast-paced society. And they may continue to endure so long as the appetite for nostalgia remains.